Let us stand and sing together number 162 in our pew missile, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Number 162. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. God 
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to seek corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ. But neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodwill at 
nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my morning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever I will give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the book of Revelations. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. 
He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. How's everyone? What a beautiful day, right? <laughs> and we had a beautiful day in our, our parish this morning with all of our First Holy Communicants receive their First Holy Communion uh, for the first time. It was really, really beautiful and such a special celebration. And tomorrow they'll have um, the May crowning at the 10.30 a.m. Mass and the 1.30 p.m. Mass. If you want to come back for the beginning of those Masses, we'll have the May crowning for the month of May. Um, with the First Holy Communicants. It's such, it's such a beautiful tradition, right, that the children, just after they receive their Holy Communion, are able to go to the Mother of Jesus and thank Him for this gift that they've received for the first time. Well, in the readings today, there's one person who stands out among the rest, and that's Peter, right? When the apostles respond to the accusation of the high priest and Peter begins preaching to the, to the high priest and everyone gathered there, who's the only one named amongst them and who's the one doing the preaching? Peter. When John tells us about the appearance of Jesus risen from the dead in this appearance that he had, who's the apostle that he names first? Peter. Whose idea was it to go fishing and whose lead do all the others follow? Peter. When John realized that it's Jesus on the shores, who's the first one to jump out of the boat? He doesn't wait until they get to shore. He jumps out of the boat and goes to the shore. Who's the first one? Peter. And who single-handedly drags the 153, the 153 fish caught in that net ashore? Peter does. And who alone has a private conversation with Jesus? Peter. Peter is all over the readings today. And in fact, all over the New Testament, it's like this. This is because of the primacy of Peter, the unique role that Jesus gave him within the church and among the 12 apostles. Jesus founded one flock, one church, and he made the center of that unity something concrete and visible for everyone to see and know. The apostle Peter and his successors, the bishops of Rome, the popes, he called, the Peter, he called Peter the rock upon which he would build his church. He gave Peter the keys of the kingdom and gave him the authority to act in his name as the head of the church. The three times that we heard Peter profess his love for Jesus in the gospel to make up for the three times he did what? The three times he denied him. Jesus called him in that moment and called him alone to be the chief shepherd of his flock. When we're united to Peter and his successors, we know that we're united to Christ and his whole church. When we reject Peter or any of his successors, we know that we're breaking that unity. We're breaking our unity with Christ and his church. This is the role of Peter's authority in the church. It's not something that serves him. Through him and his successors, the bishops of Rome, the popes, we're preserved in unity with Christ and his church. It's a gift for all of us to know that we're united with Jesus. The Pope's Peter serves this unity. They're responsible above everyone else for guaranteeing it. There's a couple things that Peter's primacy doesn't mean though. It doesn't mean that Peter's sinless or the Pope's are sinless, right? We know from the gospel story, Peter was a fallible man and he denied Jesus. They have the same fallen nature as we do. 
all 200, I think, what are we up to? 266 popes now. <laughs> all 266 of them have the same nature as we do. And they have to go to confession just like us. It also doesn't mean that they don't make mistakes either. They have the same nature as us. They're weak and imperfect just like we are. So they can make mistakes, except for one thing, except when they're teaching solemnly on matters of Christian faith and morals. Jesus gives the popes a special grace of the Holy Spirit, what we call the grace of infallibility, to always be preserved from teaching error about faith and morals. Jesus does this so that we can always know God's truth reliably and without the confusion of any error. And you know, it's interesting if you know a little bit about the history of the church. There were sometimes, you know, back in the day, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, some pretty bad popes. You know, they got messed up into, you know, a lot of different things. And you were wondering, you know, why are you doing this when you're the pope? Why are you leading an army out to battle when you're the pope? <laughs> right? There were all kinds of things like that happening with a couple of popes in the history of the church. But you know what's interesting? Not a single one of them, even in what they were doing with all that, not a single one of them ever taught something against the faith of Christ and the morals that the Lord taught us in living our lives for him. That's the kind of grace of the Holy Spirit he gives the whole church through Peter and his successors. So what does all of this mean for us? There's a couple things. The first is that we should pray for the Pope every day. What a tremendous responsibility he's received from Christ, right? And it only grows as we continue in history. There's over a billion Catholics throughout the world. Imagine being the one responsible for over a billion people in the world. Imagine the pressure and the weight of that on your shoulders, knowing that you have to answer to God one day for all of them. And yet, he's just like us, and he has that responsibility. He needs the support of our prayers more than anyone else so that he can do what God has called him to do. Secondly, we should defend and stand fast with Christ and his vicar, the Pope, and all the bishops and pastors united with him. You know, John tells us an interesting detail in the gospel that you just think, you know, why did you tell us that, John? He tells us that even though the catch of fish was being dragged in by Peter's net, even though it was so big, it did, what didn't happen to it? It wasn't torn. Why did he tell us that? Peter's net is Christ's net. Christ's net is the church. We should never do anything to tear apart the unity of the church around Christ and his shepherds. We should do the best we can to understand them when they're teaching us about Christ and the way to follow him. And if we hear anyone talking bad about them, we should stop them immediately or walk away immediately. Jesus said, what you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. That also applies to his shepherds that he's placed in lawful authority. Finally, we should thank God each day for the complete and utter gift it is of being able to belong to the one flock of Christ. We don't deserve anything. We didn't do anything to deserve the gift of being one of the Lord's sheep, of being in the safety of his pasture. So let's never take it for granted and pray each day that God blesses it with the gifts of unity and peace, all the way from the chief shepherd down to the littlest lamb. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the intentions of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop David O'Connell, and for our priests and brothers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and boys of our parish, whom God is calling to be priests and brothers, especially in the Red Bank Oratory of St. Philip Neri, and for the women and girls whom God is calling to be sisters, that they have the courage to say yes to him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husband and wives and widows and widowers, that they may lead their families to greater holiness and fidelity to Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and those in need, that the Lord may inspire in us new ways of serving him in them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of our families and parish, and for those who have no one to pray for them, that our prayers may accompany them as they are prepared for paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for Michael J. Devine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your kindness and mercy, we ask you to please hear and answer our prayers according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite the children to bring their gifts to the altar. As we prepare and offer our gifts, we sing together number 99, Be Joyful Mary, Heavenly Queen, number 99. Mary, Heavenly Queen, God Mary. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the ablation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, St. Philip, St. Anthony of Padua, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to it, their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through who him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. can be found on page 181 of your pew missile. In the tents of the just, the Lord's right hand has a mighty deeds, his right hand is exalted. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord punished me, punished me severely, but did not hand me over to death. Open to me the gates of justice, I will enter and thank the Lord. This is the Lord's own gate where the just enter. I will thank you for you have answered and you are my savior. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. O Lord, grant salvation, O Lord, grant success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, come and eat. He took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia. We continue singing number 135, Gift of Finest Meat, number 135. Joyful lips we 
sing to you I praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy Lord to share this heavenly food you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us O saving Lord the bread of life to eat is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ our poor to not one cup one Lord Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell. to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, and so Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray.
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We just have a couple of announcements. Our walking pilgrimage is next Saturday at 8 a.m. Please pick up a registration form in the entrance area. And if you'd like to take the bus, that'll take you from St. Anthony's to the start of the walk, which is over in, um, uh, it's Shrewsbury Riverfront Park, right in Seabread, I think. Um, you can, there's a sign up in the entrance area to, to sign up for that bus. There's limited seats available, so be sure to sign up early if you'd like a seat. One of our parishioners, Debbie Gaudino, is offering a six-week Latin class online beginning May 4th. Meetings will be on Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m., and there's flyers in the entrance area with more information. This, this past Monday, Sean, our music director, he uh, had tested positive with COVID. He's doing very well now, um, but because of that, we have to postpone the or organ dedication and recital and everything uh, that we had planned that was supposed to be for this Sunday. So as soon as we get a, a date, uh, we'll let you know. But in your meantime, keep, keep Sean in your prayers. He should be back on I think Wednesday or Thursday of the, this week. But uh, thank God he's doing, doing a lot better and um, just keep him in your prayers. Our cafe is opening again in May. If you can help us out with the cafe, please sign up in the entrance area. Our parish desert day is also this Wednesday. This is a, the monthly retreat day now that we're, we're sharing with all the parish. Please see the bulletin and website for the schedule of prayer during the day. There's only one change to the schedule. There's a funeral on Wednesday morning. So from 9 to 10.30, we won't have prayer in the church because of the funeral, but right after that, everything will pick up again with the prayers during the day. There's also Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament this Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. And there's Youth, Junior, and Children's Oratory, our children's group for those from kindergarten all the way up to high school, this Sunday at 7 p.m. It's a lot, right? <laughs> We're busy. <laughs> so come, come into as much as you can. Um, and the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be God. We go forward singing number 258 at the land, oh, the day of resurrection, number 258.
Do, do those people not read your stuff before they come? They're supposed to. That's Third the Sunday. That's the gospel. We turn back a few pages. Second reading. Third Sunday. But she was back here somewhere. Because he had to turn back. What does this say? This says Sir Sunday of Easter, too, but that's B. Yeah, but this is C. Yeah, well, it was on C, evidently. 